uh, welcome everyone to the webot automation using selenium by mayank joshi and saikat sen gupta we are glad that uh, both these speakers can join us today and uh, over to you guys you can start the session thank you so much uh, the organizing committee uh, for selecting our uh, presentation for this i'll quickly share my screen and uh, then we'll have a quick introduction of mayank and myself so i'll i'll uh, introduce myself first so my name is saitya sen gupta i'm currently working as a, a software engineer at mastercard uh, i have around 14 years of work ex and uh, it uh, particularly worked on java selenium and other related technologies around uh, testing automation some devops uh, as well and uh, this uh, year we got a chance to work on a particular technology called webauthn and this talk is going to be our exploration around webauthn and how we can automate that using selenium so i hope that this session is going to be useful for you you'll get to learn something new um so mank over to you you can introduce yourself and i'll start sharing my screen thank you so much saiket um i'm mank joshi um i have around 14 uh, 13 years of experience in it industry mostly into roles of um automation engineer functional uh, um qa right and and recently i have moved into software development engineering role um my roles have mostly spanned around developing automation suits using a quick test automation pro right which was first of the automation tools um some some time down five or six years down the line right uh, mostly used in banking uh, domains today and later on moved on to jb have selenium and and started using a lot of uh, behavior driven fr uh, frameworks as well so recently have i'm working with mastercard uh, close to seven years now and um, i along with saikat are working together on a on a project right which is to enable webauthn um across enterprise um and also make it available as a value added service to to our internal as well as external customers um <clears throat> this session is more around uh, how we dealt around the challenges that we had uh, come across uh, while automating um passwordless authentication uh, using webauthn and this is what we are going going to demo in this session okay so quickly um Uh, discussing about what is webauthn right we are all too familiar with using usernames and passwords as a method for authentication although this framework is ubiquitous and easy to understand for the common consumer but still think right one in five users have exp experienced account takeovers from password credentials um if you wish to check your check it out yourself right if your credentials have been le leaked some somewhere um during this journey it journey you can just go and check uh, have i been pawn.com right uh, using your username or phone number and it will give you the history of whether you were uh, prey to account takeover any time in in your it journey according to a study um, during a period of just one year data breaches exposed total of 1.9 billion usernames and password this this in itself is is concerning and waiting for some some innovation to happen in this space wherein how we can get away with this um forms of form of authentication so then so industry advanced and 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 there there came in the next iteration of credential authentication which which we all know is second factor authentication or two factor authentication but customer accounts po uh, popular low assurance second factor is sms and we all know there are a lot of documented ways uh which describes how vulnerable it is to phishing attacks uh industry advanced again and and we moved over to u2f which is universal uh, assurance framework right uh, using security keys um it 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 accepted it was accepted industry wide and and it uh, it uh, uh, attracted traction but again um it was not that seamless uh, of adoption with with all of the majority of the browsers that we have in the industry and um, that is the reason why uh, it, it it was not it it, it didn't fly um, there were also concerns with the way there was an implementation of it around using javascript apis in the background and and again it lost steam 
Web Authn, um, in comparison to all of these forms of authentication, provides a potential solution to advanced phishing attacks, which simultaneously improve customer experience. So we have a brand new Web Authn platform API that provides standardized way of strong authentication on web. It is also available on all majority of the browsers on desktop and mobile platforms, uh, be it Chrome, Firefox, um, Edge, Safari, Opera, all browsers have uh, already certified themselves against this particular solution, along with um, industry leaders like uh, Windows, um, Microsoft, right? Uh, and and I, um, iOS, they have already embedded this solution um, onto their platforms and hardwares and have already received FIDO certification for the same. So WebAuthn is, is not, is more than just an API, right? It, it is, it also enables authenticators that come in wide variety of um, forms, which we usually call user um, authentication forms, right? So you can authenticate yourself either using fingerprint or password or touch ID or your face ID, right? Even in comparison to password. So you can think of it as a strong form of authentication, right? Wherein you do not have to combine it with passwords to implement second factor of authentication. Basically, you already have something that have something, right? Your device and something that you that you are right that is your fingerprint so you get great security along with user experience quickly talking about um, the advantage it it brings along with it is firstly is the protection against phishing um, an attacker who creates a fake login website can't log in as as the user because the signature changes with the origin of the website so web Authn works on the concept that you are a client and there is a server. Now, the exchange that happens between the client and server over here is in form of public key cryptography. And along with that, there are some um, signatures which are exchanged uh, over the uh, internet, right? And, and that signature is um, closely tied to your domain name of, of your web application, as well as the private key, which has been stored, which is stored on the user device and, and used to sign that signature. We'll talk, um, talk more on, on this in a while, but usually this is how, um, it, it prevents phishing. Usually if I present a spoof site and, and try to authenticate or trick a user to authenticate itself against it, I'll be caught and it won't be allowed. Right? So this is one, uh, great level of protection which we get with web of thin um, which is um, protection against phishing secondly if we talk about impact of data breaches right as i said uh, the number of data breaches that we saw uh, just a uh, just a while ago in uh, regards to passwords um, developers don't need to hash the public key and, and if an attacker gets access to the pub public key used to verify the authentication it can't authenticate because it needs a private key so ho whole logic of web Authn works on public key cryptography wherein the private key which gets created as part of the registration remains on the device however the public key along with some other attributes which can help identify uh, that particular user account and and its credential is stored on the server now, even if the public key gets breached, right? Somebody uh, hacks the uh, database where I'm storing all of these details, it, it won't be of much use because unless you have the private key, public key is of no use. Um, that is one of the main advantage that we have uh, with, uh, with WebAuthn. And as I said, right, invulnerable to password attacks, obviously you do not have to use passwords in any form over here and an, and an attacker may obtain the user's password for another website, um, right? Uh, which can be termed as a data breach. But uh, since there are no passwords involved over here, we, we are safe from that perspective since it is, all the it is all game of public and private key. So we'll quickly walk you through how this works in action uh, through a simulation um that we have already recorded and you can also try it yourself um, um from this website which is webauthn.me right so as you can see right uh, uh, the, the three key important participant in this flow are the authenticator 
um, the web app running on the web browser and the web server, right? So as a user, right, I'll, I'll, I'll authenticate myself, I uh, register myself either using username or email ID, right? And uh, the, to kick off the registration flow, the server first exchanges a challenge, right? Which is a large random number and uh, which is later thrown away, right? So all of this information along with the random uh, bits of string, right, uh, which, which is termed as a challenge response is transmitted along with user information to the web app running on the browser. Web app then calls the uh, web authentication API, right? It, it ex extracts the domain name of the web application and provides all of this information to the use to the authenticator, which then asks for user consent, as you can see on the screen, um, right? So this is required so that malicious websites cannot use APIs to track the user. It is it is a part of protecting users' privacy. So I'll I'll make use of the platform authenticator which is available on my on on my laptop, and I'll provide my consent. Um, the authenticator then generates a public private key pair internally, along with the credential ID. Um, user information and importantly the domain name this credential belongs to all of this right is is forwarded to the server right and it is stored along with the user information and a private key over there so as you can see right this is the private key this is the public key information um, presented on the screen is, is something which is stored at the server corresponding to the user information whereas the private key remains on the device which is usually uh, the authenticator is part of the device and, and it is something which will store um, this information. So remember you only have to do it once. Now then comes the next part of it as in to use the registered authentication uh, mechanism to, to authenticate for a subsequent uh, transactions on the website. So starting here is the authenticator already knows your private key and the server has the public key in association with the user account. So once again, the flow starts with the server uh, generating a challenge. The server transmits the credential ID and the challenge to the web application, which in turn calls the web authentication API. And, and that is when you get to see again, the user consent screen popping up. The user is you provide your uh, registered authentication over here. The user is locally verified. Browser extracts the domain name of the calling application and sends all of this information to the authenticator. Authenticator looks up this information for the credential ID. And uh, the name of the website matches to the one that was provided at the time credential was created. This is what this authenticators, this is what makes authenticators register, resistant to phishing. So all of this is, is in short, the complete journey of how re registration and authentication works in real. Uh, obviously the challenge that gets created, the random um, bytes or the random character string is obviously invalidated at the end of registration authentication flow, right? It is, it is just short-lived. So that is all about uh, WebAuthn in action. So all this time we have been talking about authenticators, right? So people usually get confused by the term authenticators. It is it is nothing but a way to verify a user, right? Um, there are number of authenticators available in, in the market today. Some authenticators are, I, 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 are tried, tied closely to the platform or the device. Nowadays, uh, the latest models of devices and laptops that we get uh, in the market, they already have this authenticators inbuilt, right? So if I have to give you a few examples, Windows Hello, right? It already comes with inbuilt uh, strong authenticator, which can help you authenticate using fingerprint, fa uh, face or pin. Similarly on iOS, if I have to say, you get a, a authenticator, right? Uh, uh, iSense, which can help you authenticate using touch ID or fingerprint, right? So. Uh, to talk more about this authenticators, right? Platform authenticators are the ones that are integrated with a device and are capable of capturing the authentication factor. Authentication factor can be fingerprint, right? Uh, touch ID, as I said, also called as internal authenticators. So a few examples of platform authenticators, touch ID, face ID, Windows, hello, where the respective features include being embedded with the device itself. 
with platform authenticators the primary device such as a laptop or the smartphone contains the necessary components of a trusted platform module such as secure enclave uh, or TPM, right? If you talk specifically about Android and iOS. The user actively or passively authenticates the request is matched against the encrypted information on the TPM and that is how they are granted access all on the same device. So this is more of a concept of local authentication rather than authentication details getting exchanged over the uh, channel, right? And server validating it against the set of uh, passwords that it has already stored at its end. Now, coming to next uh, type of authenticators, which is platform authentic, uh, cross platform authenticators are also called as roaming authenticators or external authenticators, such as hardware security key, right? Uh, you might have used YubiKey at some of the other uh, time in your journey, right? These authenticators can be used with a laptop or mobile device and are thus cross, cross platform. This characteristics enables their use to establish a secure source uh, for verifying the user identity and for delegating trust to the specific device in the user control, right? The user can therefore authorize other devices as needed, or we can say we can, they can bootstrap them. Such should one of uh, those other devices be lost or become corrupted, the roaming authenticator is used to authorize a new device. So it is more about the roaming authenticators. You can also use your mobile device as a roaming authenticator. You can also use a YubiKey as your roaming authenticator. Basically, uh, trusting some another device which can be used as a form of authenticator and authorizing uh, the device which does not have the inbuilt capability um, within the device itself. The last form of authenticator is, is a virtual authenticator, right? So as uh, compared to previous two authenticators, which are more tight, tied to the hardware, right? This, these are kind of authenticators, which are simulated authenticators, or you can say software based authenticators, which are developed just to serve some of the uh, purposes, right? For example, automation, which is one of them. You cannot make use of real authenticators and then present your fingerprint or face ID um, during your authentication or automation journey. Uh, what comes in uh, picture and, and can come to your rescue is the virtual authenticator, which are are inbuilt so, or not inbuilt. They are, those are software authenticators and mostly developed using JavaScript. You only had, have to add a few lines of code to your login page to implement it, right? Web browsers are automatically compatible. Um, for example, Chrome already has a support for virtual authenticator and that is something which we'll be demoing in a while. Uh, however, web browsers are automatically compatible and users do not need any tokens, smartphones or plugins, right, to, to use them. So this, this category of web authenticator are specifically more useful when we get into automation or performance testing uh, phases um, of, of QE, right? So over to you, Saiket, to take us through to the automation stuff. Thank you so much, Frank, for setting up the context and sharing the overview of WebAuthn. It was really helpful. Even I could <laughs> revise some of the concept myself. Um, so hello everyone. Now I'll walk you through um, how the virtual authenticator basically works. And so far the implementation is done by the Chromium team, right? The Chrome and Chromium based browsers such as uh, um, Edge, uh, then you have Opera, then Brave. All these browsers do have the virtual authenticator functionality already inbuilt with the uh, system. So when we started our journey with this project, eventually we had this question, right? Like now how we can automate the stuff. Like there was uh, a testing aspect as well. Uh, after the exploratory testing is over, right? Uh, we also at the same time, we have started thinking about the test automation aspect. And uh, Selenium 4 was there for quite some time. I think it took four or five years. Uh, finally, uh, we got the final release of Selenium last year. Um, in our organization, there is a policy that you have to like uh, pick the latest stable releases of the software, software wherever uh, applicable. So since when we started working on this, only Selenium 3 was in the release state. Uh, we basically explored Selenium 3, how we can fit in our 
uh, automation journey in that. And obviously, Selenium 4 was giving a much more flexible um, option. Uh, but uh, we picked up that later once Selenium 4 was released um, to the wider audience. Now, uh, coming to Virtual Authenticator, um, let me... <clears throat> okay. So I'll use this website, which is similar to the one we just have seen, webauthent.me. So there are quite a few sample websites in case you have to explore the stuff yourself. Uh, this is going to be helpful. So how the application under test is going to work, right? I'll give a quick overview how webauthent.io is uh, working. So first of all, uh, as we just seen uh, that I have to enter a username, it could be anything. So let me add a uh, selling conference. And then there are certain options. We can keep it as is, but this is basically uh, to fine tune your authenticator experience. Right? So there are quite a few attributes defined by the web author spec. Uh, so one of which is attestation, attestation type, right? So what exactly is attestation type? So that means uh, basically the authenticator that you're using is kind of a legit type of authenticator, right? So that the server uh, will know that, okay, attestation was done and this is the authenticator that I can rely upon. Okay. So there are two different types of attestation. One can be <coughs> indirect or the other one will be direct. So in indirect attestation, you basically don't expose a lot of information. Those are kindly uh, wrapped in, in such a way that that is more uh, private and you're not exposing a lot of de details and still getting the benefit of attestation and direct is like you are saying that okay this is the authenticator id and these are the other details uh, which can be utilized to attest uh, that uh, particular authenticator by the server right so i can choose any of this let me select a uh, direct type of what, uh, attestation and then there is authenticated type so we just spoke about authenticated type so virtual authenticator is kind of an emulated one which is particularly used for testing and debugging uh, the journeys uh, the user experience but uh, primarily it's two different type of authenticators that we have right so one is the cross platform or the external or roaming type of authenticator that mang just explained and the uh, last one is the platform the trusted platform module that i do have in my uh, inbuilt on my in my system Right, so right now I'm presenting this from my uh, MacBook, uh, which has a SQL enclave, and I do have the touch ID enabled. Right, so I would be able to uh, register myself on this side. So it's asking me for the password. I have given the password now, it says that success from try logging in. So if I just log in with the same user, I'll see that the password prompt is again shown to me. I'll enter that and I'm successfully logged in. So if I try it with a different user, for example, which isn't registered yet. Um, so let me select the same options once again. And <clears throat> I try to log in. So I'm getting these options and it says something went wrong, right? So the operation either timed out was not. That's because I haven't registered myself, right? So that's, that's the reason. And there are certain other advanced setting uh, which will quickly look into once we uh, open the virtual uh, authenticator. So now, how can we enable the virtual authenticator? So that is there in the Chrome DevTools or uh, if you open the DevTools window, let me zoom in a little. Okay, um, so if I just go under the settings option, I can see there is a more tools. There are a lot of tools available. Um, then I, I do have this web authent functionality I'll select that. And now I get a very simple minimalist uh, window, which just said that enable virtual authenticator environment. So right now, so my device do have the TPM module. It has the actual authenticator setup, right? So I'm just creating a bridge between the virtual authenticator and the browser so that the next time all the calls will be redirected to my virtual authenticator rather than going to the, uh, the platform module basically. And the new authenticator option basically is giving me the different protocols available. So CTAP2 is the default uh, one that I'm selecting here. Under transport uh, mechanisms, I, had, I do have four types. So internal is going to be selected when I'm using the platform module, right? the TPM module. USB, Bluetooth, NFC would be used for external or roaming authenticators, right? So I'll select internal. And there are a few more options, right? Supports resident keys, supports user verification and large blob. So support resident keys basically means that the, uh, the storage of the credential can happen. Like WebAuthn has given a lot of flexibilities. So in case if someone wants to store the uh, like credentials 
obviously in an encrypted and secure manner in a uh, server okay so then i can uh, enable the support resident keys or uh, disable as uh, resident keys or not and user verification support is basically ensuring through gesture uh, modalities like uh, i'm entering my biometrics or entering some pin or password right just to ensure that the, okay user uh, is uh, verified uh, when the transaction was uh, done so let me keep it as is i'll just simply add the authenticator and i can see that now a new authenticator has been created uh, i can rename the authenticator by default it takes this uh, six digit of the id okay so i can rename that so for example dummy authenticator something like that and it is going to be active so i can create multiple authenticators but at the uh, at one time only one single authenticator would be active okay now um so the other options we can see that whatever i have said is basically reflected in the in the screen as well and then there is a uh, credential store so authenticator uh, authenticator is basically the credential store every time i do a registration on uh, uh, like the web auth and enable side right the credential will be created for me the private and public key pair and that would be stored as one a record right so if i just go ahead and try to register myself now you can see it's saying success but i haven't got that prompt right that's because the browser has now redirected the call to the virtual authenticator rather than my uh, inbuilt actual tpm and i can see there is a credential created with a signature count one and there are options uh, for some reason i think i'm zo i have zoomed in that's why it's not clearly visible but there is an option to export that and uh, remove that as well that credential now once that is created that same credential now can be used to log in myself right so when i click login i can see that i'm logged in and the signature count has also increased so the signature count will be increased every time you use that credential to authenticate yourself right so that's that's a, like basic uh, functionality of virtual authenticator which could be used in case if you want to uh, like under what circumstances you would be using uh, virtual authenticator right so as a developer or tester you have to debug certain scenarios you have to emulate cases i do i don't have a probably external key but i i want to emulate that kind of scenario how my application is going to work under such uh, cases then virtual authenticator would come in handy because it gives me a lot of debugging uh, uh, possibilities flexibilities uh, using a physical authenticator that is not going to be possible because by definition those are uh, secure right so you don't have a lot of state information for those uh, authenticators available uh, during debugging right so that's that's where the virtual authenticator came into picture and the chrome team i believe they were facing some issues while writing the uh, unit tests etc so that was one of the drivers for them to quickly come up with a virtual authenticator and uh, the web authn uh, is a w3 uh, spec compliant uh, api right so that's how uh, it is now quite useful to use the same uh, in selenium so we'll see right now how we can do it uh, using selenium so the first demo is going to be on selenium 3 and then we'll cover, eventually cover the same aspect using selenium 4 so uh, as you can see this is a very uh, straightforward um, nothing fancy uh, okay i'm okay uh, and here we have created this one single test just to check the registration and authentication flow and if i expand this test uh, that is not a lot basically i'm just opening navigating to the web and and pardon me i have i'm not using any uh standards like uh, page objects or um, other uh, stuff this is just for a demonstration quick demonstration how the web authentic virtual authentic can be used so i didn't uh, use those so i'm just entering my username password uh trying to register and then eventually i'm trying to log in okay so that's what the test is all about and in the meantime i'm just setting up the virtual authenticator as well now in order to set those virtual authenticator i basically am using the extension command right so i'm just uh, creating a, a defining a new command using the http command executor class and there are it's kind of a hacky uh, if you get to know a better way to do it selenium 3 um, please let me know but 
I believe you're still, uh, you're, you're probably already migrated to Selenium 4 because that is giving a lot of um, new stuff, new functionalities, exciting features. So I don't see any reason why uh, users still would be using Selenium 3. But in case, if you're uh, still stuck with Selenium 3, then th this is also possible. When you are just defining uh, this extra command to add a virtual authenticator with all the options. Now, what are the different options available? All these are documented on the web auth spec uh, for which we will share the links later on and then finally i'm just adding the virtual auth command with the session id that i have started and with all the params parameters that i've created right so protocols adapt to the transport is internal and then the other options that we have seen can also be embedded here and executing the command just to set up the virtual authenticator it could it could uh, be like you are adding the virtual authenticator then it also gives function ID to uh, add credential, remove credential, all those uh, methods are available if you just use this define command. Okay. So that's pretty much it. Uh, let me quickly start the test just to see how it is working. Hopefully things will work. And I do don't have that uh, curse of live demo. <laughs> Okay, so the website is now up. Username and the details are entered, registered successfully. I have clicked on login. Okay, so that's truly the curse of light demo. Okay, let me see what happened. You're logged in. <laughs> Unable to look at element okay maybe my network is slow i'll just do a little bit of trickery here increasing the sleep time not a good practice but i think fair enough to do in a light demo and that should be okay that's just because unfortunately my network was not giving me company okay Okay, site is getting opened. Details are entered, registered, logged in, logged in, done. Test is now successfully done. Now, as you have just noticed that this is a lot of uh, hacky way to do something, which can latest implementation of Selenium, right? So let me switch to my selenium 4 project and all the projects are already up and uh, pushed to github so i'll share the links for the code base and as well as the slides so same test is again getting run from this no difference in that right the only difference is the way i am setting up the virtual authenticator okay so as you can see the virtual authenticator is now part of the class and I didn't have that idea because I primarily work with the Java uh, technology. So I was told that uh, this implementation was completed in Java. And I think in one of the Python uh, patch release, this is also uh, available for Selenium. For uh, other implementation, I'm not quite sure. I think it will be eventually uh, taken up and implemented. But uh, the virtual authenticator, which is a class uh, interface, right? And the implementation can be found in the remote virtual authenticator, right? So all the implementation are added here uh, with the add credential, get credential, remove credential, all those um, nice and useful methods are available here. And then what I'm doing is I'm creating a virtual authenticator options, setting up all the options that I need, something similar that we have seen, uh, like setting up the transport as internal protocol as it have to uh, user verification, setting up uh, a true uh, user verified as true. All those op options are now added in the virtual authenticator options, which is being passed to our driver, which has the virtual authenticator capability now after all the setup is done. So that's it. This is a very neat and clean way and very much readable as well, uh, just to see that, okay, everything is working fine. Still, uh, using uh, web authentic capabilities. Uh, let me run this. Okay, I probably have to do the same hack. So before it fails, let me just increase the time a little. Yeah. Again, not a good practice. So. Uh, okay. Let me see now.
Okay, the same site will come up in a moment. Okay, there it is. Registration is done successfully. Now we are trying to log in. And we are logged in. The test case basically successfully done. And that's, I think, gives some uh, adrenaline shot seeing just the green ticks. <laughs> um, so that's how the virtual authenticator could be automated using Selenium bo with both the versions, as you have seen. But the preferred one would certainly be Selenium 4 because it has the cleanest way to implement the stuff. Right. So that was all about the demo. Coming back to the presentation, I think we have covered of all the things that we wanted to cover. I'll share the link and the presentation as I have already promised. So we do have still some time for Q&A. Uh, Shailesh, um, are we going to take the Q&A now or will it be done in the Hangout rooms? Uh, if we have time, like we have a couple of minutes, so we can take the questions. I can see a question in the Q&A. And the okay. question is that uh, how long would the authenticator be available on a particular browser? And uh, this is this is a uh, like uh, appeal to everyone that uh, in case you want to ask question, just uh, ask them here in the meantime, or uh, you can join our Hangout also after the call. So over to you, Saikat. Yeah, thank you for that. Uh, and this is a nice question. So the, for me, uh, since the uh, like application context was not stored anywhere, so in this case, the test, uh, the authenticator would be lost. As soon as I'm, I've closed the uh, browser window, the authenticator is not getting stored as such. Uh, we haven't particularly explored uh, the way it could be stored for future usage, but I think that's possible. Uh, but it's just that we haven't explored that part yet. But yeah, thanks for that question. That was quite interesting. Guys, if you have any question, you can ask him right now or after this, yeah, we have got uh, one more question. So that is, can we use the same for application with authentication using push notification in phone? Um, push notification would be a different aspect altogether. So uh, like in one of the journeys, we were exploring uh, how the authentication can be done using WebAuthn, but uh, the flow would be triggered from an external uh, device, right? So for example, uh, like to answer your question, I think it's going to be no because push notification is a bit different uh, than virtual authenticator, but there could be a bridge like how the web authent prompt is uh, uh, like uh, shown to the user. So for example, I do have my laptop, which doesn't have any touch ID or fingerprint uh, sensor as such, but I do have my mobile, uh, which is uh, like Android mobile or iOS uh, phone, uh, which has got this capability, right? So from my web application, I can initiate the uh, authenticator or uh, registration flow from my uh, laptop. And then eventually I'll get a push notification on my device, or maybe I have to scan a QR code and that then I'll finish the registration on my device. I'll register my uh, phone uh, finger uh, like authenticator. And later on, whenever the authentication requirement is there, I can use the uh, phone. But yeah, push notification is a bit different and the virtual authenticator is again, a little bit different than Prime. So yeah. Uh, thank you, Saikat and Mayank. Uh, that was a really wonderful session. And I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Thank you.